When most gardeners think of composting, they picture a pile that takes months, sometimes even years, to turn into dark, rich humus. But what if the timeline could be cut dramatically shorter? What if instead of waiting, the garden bed itself became the compost bin, and in just 30 days you could see a transformation that normally takes a whole season? That was the question put to the test using nothing more than compost and grass clippings. The results were tracked daily for four weeks, and what happened honestly shocked even seasoned soil builders. The speed at which life moved into the layers, the visible shift in texture, and the worm activity that followed all proved that this simple combination can supercharge soil when used correctly. This guide takes you step by step through what was observed, how compost and grass clippings interact, and what that means for your own garden if you want faster soil enrichment without extra labor. To understand why this combination works so well, you first have to look at what each material brings to the soil. Compost is already partially decomposed organic matter. It carries a balanced blend of carbon, nitrogen, and most importantly, an army of microbes that are primed for more work. Grass clippings, on the other hand, are nitrogen-rich, moist, and extremely quick to break down. On their own, grass clippings can mat down, heat up, and even sour if left in a thick pile. Compost on its own, while stable, can sometimes take months to fully integrate into soil. But layered together, they complement one another. Compost inoculates the fresh green matter with microbes, while the grass feeds those microbes with nitrogen and sugars. The result is an accelerated breakdown process that doesn't just happen on the surface. It drives directly into the soil below. Within the first week the transformation was visible. The grass clippings laid in a green mat over the compost began heating up within 24 hours. A faint steam rose in the morning signaling microbial activity in full swing. Underneath the compost absorbed the moisture from the grass, keeping it from drying out while feeding it with active microbial colonies. Worms were not yet visible in large numbers during this early stage because of the heat generated, but fungal threads were quick to appear, weaving across the underside of the grass layer. By day 7 the clippings had already shrunk by nearly half in volume, settling into a dark, moist mat. Unlike a raw grass pile which can go slimy and anaerobic, the presence of compost kept oxygen moving and prevented the layer from souring. The soil below remained damp and slightly warmer than surrounding uncovered areas, a clear sign that microbial activity was not confined to the surface but spreading downward. By the second week, the system shifted, the heat had subsided, and as the temperature of the layers normalized, Earthworms began moving upward into the mix. They tunneled through the softened clippings, dragging strands downward into the soil. Worm castings became visible along the edges of the layer, tiny piles that revealed just how quickly worms were processing the new food source. The texture of the grass by this point was honestly unrecognizable. What had been bright green strands just days earlier were now brown, stringy fragments that tore apart really easily. When lifted, the clippings just crumbled and the compost had visibly fused with them, forming a single layer of dark organic matter. Moisture retention was excellent with no signs of compaction or any sour odor. This was a critical moment in the experiment. The decomposition process had actually accelerated past the usual risk stage and entered a stable, worm-driven cycle. By week three, the effect on the soil beneath became, well, impossible to ignore. A hand-dug test showed that the top two inches of soil had shifted noticeably in texture. Where it had previously been compacted and light brown, it was now darker, looser, and crumbly. Roots from nearby plants were already exploring the enriched zone, taking advantage of the improved aeration and available nutrients. At this stage, worm tunnels were abundant. The movement of worms through both the mulch layer and the soil created natural channels for water and oxygen. When watered, the bed absorbed moisture evenly, without runoff or pooling. The combined action of microbes breaking down organic matter and worms physically integrating it into the soil was proof of a functioning soil food web, kickstarted by nothing more than layering compost and grass. By the end of 30 days, the transformation was complete. 
What had started as distinct layers of compost and fresh clippings was now a uniform band of humus-rich soil. The grass was fully decomposed, visible only in tiny fragments, and the compost had blended seamlessly into the topsoil. Worm populations had surged, leaving behind dense clusters of castings that gave the surface a dark, crumbly look. Plants in the bed showed improved growth compared to control areas without mulch. Leaf color was richer, stems sturdier, and overall vigor noticeably higher. This was not just due to nutrients released by decomposition, but also the improved soil structure. The new humus layer held water more effectively, prevented compaction, and provided a steady trickle of food for microbial and worm communities. The reason this technique produces results in just 30 days comes down to balance. Grass clippings are high in nitrogen but lack structure. Compost is stable, microbe-rich but slower to change. Together they create the perfect recipe. Nitrogen feeds microbes, compost anchors the mix and keeps it aerobic and the combination invites worms once the heat subsides. Unlike traditional compost piles which are turned and aerated over time, this method takes place directly in the soil where worms and microbes are already present. Nothing is wasted, and all the benefits flow into the bed itself, rather than a separate pile. Another factor is moisture. Grass clippings bring water content and compost holds it in place. This prevents the drying and stalling that often happens when organic matter is laid alone on the soil. The steady dampness keeps decomposition running without interruption. For gardeners wanting to replicate this method, the key is layering and balance. Start with a base of finished compost about 1 to 2 inches thick. Spread grass clippings in a layer of 2 to 3 inches on top, ensuring they are fresh but not piled too thick. Water lightly to ensure even dampness. From there, let the soil life take over. In 30 days, expect the same process. Initial heating, followed by worm colonization, and finally a fully integrated humus layer. One variation that accelerates results even further is alternating thin layers of compost and clippings, almost like a lasagna. This provides more contact points between microbes and nitrogen sources, speeding up the breakdown even more. After 30 days, the experiment revealed a simple truth. When compost and grass clippings are layered directly in the garden soil, does not just improve, it transforms. Worms arrive, microbes flourish, and within weeks you're left with a humus layer that supports stronger plant growth. For gardeners tired of waiting months for compost piles to finish, this method is a practical shortcut that uses materials already on hand. The beauty of this technique is its accessibility. Every gardener has access to grass clippings, and compost is part of nearly every soil building practice. Combined, they create a system that not only enriches soil, but also builds long-term fertility with minimal labor. If this guide gave you insights into how simple layering can fast-track soil building, make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this with other gardeners who want to grow stronger, healthier plants without wasted effort. Together, we can keep uncovering the techniques that make soil not just fertile but alive.